Hello, my name is Xander. Welcome to the ORM Mastery Course Level 1 for Beginners. This tutorial is part of the YouTube Edition playlist Django Database ORM Mastery. You can find the link to this playlist in the video description where you'll find all the tutorials associated to this course. If you would like to follow along step by step, you can download our base Django project, code base one. There is a link in the video description to that code. Now, if you are not familiar with Django and how to start a new Django project, there is also a video guide on how to download and start the project. Again, there is a link in the video description to that. In this tutorial, we learn that we don't have to utilize the tools provided by Django to generate queries. We can create our own SQL queries and send that to the database. In this tutorial, we create SQL inserts, executing custom SQL code, which will then insert data into the database. If you like this course and would like to learn more, then do consider our course on Udemy, Django Database ORM Mastery Level 1. The actual thumbnail might change over time, but just look for Created by Very Academy. There is a link in the video description to the course. That is always going to give you the best price for the course. If you were following along from the previous tutorials, you've already seen some SQL code. Um, we were looking at the connection.queries. So Django is storing behind the scenes the queries that we are performing, and we can then go ahead and inspect them. So let's just get everything reset here. Now, if you haven't, I'll say this one more time, if you are following this step by step and you haven't got this set up ready, then have a look at the setup guide at the start of this section, which will take you to this point here and we can start together and move forward from this point. Okay, so right, let's get into the shell. So, so far in this course, we've learned a little bit about how to insert data into the database. So here we're gonna focus on creating our own SQL code uh, to insert data into the database. And we will be utilizing some of the Django tools to help us perform those operations. So let's go ahead and get into this shell. So within Django, we tend to have two options here to perform raw SQL queries. We have the raw manager. Now we can only use the raw manager on queries that return model instances. So similar to dot query, for example. So in this case, we are running inserts or we're going to insert data into the database. So we aren't returning any model instances. So therefore we're going to have to use the method um, where we utilize the connection cursor. So we will move to the raw manager later on in other examples, but here we're going to utilize the connection cursor. So what is the connection cursor? Well, we could describe this in many different ways, but let's just think of it as an object uh, which we can use to make a connection to our database for then to enable us to then execute SQL queries. So let's go ahead and from the Django DB, let's import connection. And through that, we can then access the cursor. So we say cursor equals connection. We don't have to do it this way, of course, we could just import it directly, connection dot uh, cursor. There we go. Okay, so now we can utilize this to kind of connect and execute SQL queries. So let's say cursor um, dot and then execute. And now we can define our query that we want to run. In order for us to actually generate a query, we are going to need to know about what table we want to insert data into, and then also what fields are stored or what fields are associated to that table. So here we do have the extension, the SQLite extension. So we utilize that again just to explore our tables. So we'll start with the brand table. We can see that there are three, three fields here, and we do have this manually created primary key. What's important to note here is the name of the table. So notice that Django has a naming convention when building tables. It looks like we're utilizing here the name of the actual application, which is inventory, and then the name of the class that we specified um, in our models. So that was brand. So if we wanted to actually insert data into this table, we're gonna to need to know what table we want to insert into. Now I keep using the word insert, so let's just um, 
specify this insert command here. So this is a command that, an SQL command that tells the data that we want to insert, we want to add some data into the database. Simple as that, so insert. So now it's just a case of specifying what we want to insert into. So we have the into, and these commands here, um, I've placed them in capitals here just to highlight them. They don't need to be in capitals. So into, and we then need to specify the table that we want to work with. So inventory brand, so inventory brand. So insert into inventory brand. And now we need to specify the fields um, or the columns um, that we want to insert data in. So in this case, in the brand table, we have two fields here, which is going to be the brand ID, which is the primary key. And then we also have the name. There is a third, but we're not going to use that in this case. All right, so let's just move that across a little bit. So now we need to specify the values. So here we're using placeholders. Now, the reason why this is, very briefly, is it helps protect against SQL injection. Now, if you wanted to learn a little bit more about this, if you are new to this, then have a little read online, search for bind parameters, or potentially parameterized queries, uh, can also be known as dynamic parameters, or for example, bind variables. Essentially, this is just an alternative way of passing data into the database, like I said, which will help us um, against or protect us against SQL injection. So here we have two values. So let's go ahead and add two placeholders. So we're gonna need a comma in between. There we go. And then let me just uh, move that across so we can see everything. So once we've done that, we can now specify our value. So here we are going to need, uh, let's just uh, get this right. So let's just put this within our, our doubles here. Um, okay, so after this, we are going to need a, a comma. Okay, so now we can specify our values and we can do that by first of all specifying, for example, the brand ID. So let's just go for one and then we can go for then the, the name. So we'll just stick with a simple name there. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. So that's going to be our SQL statement. So we are using the brand table, so we're going to need to import that in. Let's do that. So from inventory models, import brand. So that makes the brand table available. Okay, step one. Um, in actual fact, I can't remember if we've added all this in yet. So um, let's just go ahead and make sure that we've, we have, we don't need this, I'm not too sure where that came from. So let's just make sure that we've gone ahead and just included this all in to our terminal. So we have all these resources available from our terminal. So with that in place, let's just make sure that the brand table has is empty. So objects.all and then delete. Okay, so now the table is now empty. So let's go ahead now and use our new SQL statement here. So we're going to place this here. And I'll just see if I can fold the line for you so we can see everything. So I've just folded the line there, it's not a new line. Um, and then let's go ahead and execute. So we'll move both of these statements in. And you can see here that we have a syntax error. So it clearly identifies or tries to identify sorry, where the error is. It looks like we have an error here near the value syntax near the values command. So it's likely to be something really simple. And you can see in actual fact that we've missed a parenthesis here. So, uh, so let's go ahead and add that. And let's just try this again. So we just need to bring in the, um, the execute command because we've already inserted this into the terminal. So let's give that a go. And this time we have a syntax error somewhere else. So let's take a look at where that might be. So insert into inventory brand, and then we've got brand ID and name. So there isn't anything there. So values, we've got then a, oh, okay. So it looks like what's happening is I'm ending, notice that this bracket here is 
part of this component here. So we're ending the statement too early. It should be ending right here with this bracket. So that's that little problem there. So let's just try this again. And not null constraint. Okay, so the nickname says now is not null. So we have to insert something into the nickname field as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So we add the, this time, nickname. Um, and then we're going to need to add here the third. And then we're going to add a nickname at the end here. So let's call this just night. There we go. Right, so now we've included all the fields. Um, it looks like we're ready to go. So let's just do this one more time. So if you didn't see that, because it's just dropped below the line, we had an inventory um, field is a not set to not null. So that failed. So let's just give this a go again. So I'll clear that. And this time we can see that we return an object. So which is indicating the fact we now have inserted this data into the database. So let's go ahead and check to see that either by using the terminal here or we can use the SQLite extension. Have a look at the brand table. And we can see here that we've just entered that into the database. So a big question here you might have is that previously we found that when we inserted into the brand table using the model manager, we didn't actually need to do include the nickname field. It wasn't a mandatory field. Yet, when we utilize SQL code directly, it looks like it is. So here we are circumnavigating around Django and we are working with the database directly. So the rules are going to be slightly different here as we're going to see as we start to explore SQL and the database that we're utilizing in a little bit more detail. What this might start highlighting to you is the benefit of the Django RRM, something that is always um, touted or written about Django as a benefit. We can see potentially how easy it is to create insert statements user like utilizing the tool set that is provided by Django in comparison to creating our own SQL inserts, for example, in this case. But let's just go back to this um, issue that we saw previously where um, we didn't include the nickname field. So the error that we were receiving, it wasn't suggesting that we actually had to enter any data into the field. It was just suggesting that we actually had to name it um, here in the insert statement. So let's just go ahead and change this. And we can see this happening again. So here we aren't actually entering anything into this field, but we are naming it here. So let's go, let's go ahead and insert that in. You can see that is okay. And it's not until you actually remove this field name until we actually get the error. So we just need to be explicit to make sure that we specify um, all of the columns rather than having to actually insert data into um, that particular field. In actual fact, apologies, we need to change this value to revert back properly. So let's just do that. So I've removed one of the values here and now I'm receiving not all arguments converted during string formatting. Okay. So let me just remove that. Just do this one more time. And here we go. So here we have the, the not null constraint failed inventory um, brand dot nickname. So let's just compare this SQL code to the code that is generated by the Django RM. So we're bringing the, um, we've got the table. So let's bring in the connection and reset queries. So we're going to need that. Um, we've got connection actually. So we're just going to need reset queries. So those are the tools that are going to allow us to inspect the SQL that's generated by Django. So let's go ahead and create a new object. So to do that, we're going to use the brand objects.create. Um, so here we're going to create brand ID 100, like 100. Okay, so we just go ahead. First of all, just reset any queries. Um, we've not actually brought that in, apologies. Let's bring that into the terminal so we can utilize it. So we go ahead and reset 
the queries and then we go ahead and run our query here. Okay, so we've added that now to the database and now let's go ahead and have a look at connection queries. So we're going to need to run connection queries here. And there we go. So that's the equivalent SQL code that's generated by Django. Um, so we can see it has an insert into, it's just to compare, and then the name of the table. And here you can see that Django is actually generating all the field names. So this is why we don't receive an error. Although we, we have an empty field here um, corresponding to this field nickname, um, you can see that it's actually specified, the name is, or the field is actually specified here in the fields. So we can see how that aligns and how Django is actually specifying all the fields and why we don't receive an error, similar to the error that we're receiving here when we don't actually supply the third field. So let's go for nickname there. Um, let's just expand that and just remember that we can then just include an empty, empty string right there. Right. Okay, so hopefully we can see what is happening here. The dynamics of this SQL statement, we have um, the command which um, instructs our database to look for this table. We then identify the fields that we want to insert data into, and then we specify the values. So please leave a comment if you're not too sure if that doesn't quite resonate with you. I'm always happy to consider changing materials in this course to enhance and improve. So your feedback is always very welcomed. Hopefully that's given us a starting point to start to think about creating and executing SQL inserts. Here we just inserted into the brand table. We could roll that out into the other tables. We are, of course, going to explore some of the other intricacies of creating foreign keys, working with one-to-one -one and many-to-many -many tables. And we'll look at that further in the course. But hopefully at this point, we've got a good grounding. We can move forward with SQL code.